Okay, now we're going to talk about another application of angles, and this has to do with angular speed and linear speed. So here's a couple formulas I'll give you. First of all, angular speed, uh, we use a Greek letter that's actually, it looks like a W, but it's actually the Greek letter omega, and so it's the angle theta that can be swept out by time t. So basically, it's going to be how much, how much angle is covered over a certain amount of time. It might be revolutions per minute. It might be maybe 30 radians and one second, something like that. That would be considered an angular speed. So it's basically how far, how many angles that you travel, that you go and over a certain amount of time. Your theta is usually given in terms of radians. Now linear speed is uh, a type of speed that you might be familiar with. Uh, it's, it's like a distance divided by time. That's going to be your, like a rate or your linear speed there. Now your S. In this case, because we're talking about with uh, circles and angles, your S is actually going to be your arc length. So arc length formula we talked about before. So we can say that, that V is equal to R times theta over T. So R times theta would be your uh, arc length that we had before. Well now notice what we have in the formula. I have theta over T. Well theta over T is my omega that I talked about before. So now I can say that, that V equals R times omega and this is a formula primarily we're going to be working with here. So for this you know the radius and then you know your omega. Your omega is uh, your angular speed. So that makes sense that the radius has to do with your speed and so let me illustrate what the speed actually means. You're considering a point on a circle and the circle is rotating around this way. It's actually how fast that point itself is moving around the circle. This is talking about how much angle was covered over a certain amount of time, but this is actually talking about an actual uh, a speed going around. It may, may this distance here is 30 centimeters. You cover 30 centimeters in one second. It's how far it's actually traveled over a certain amount of time. So it's closer to the speed that we typically think of when driving a car or something like that. It's how far we travel over a certain amount of time. Okay, so if you're closer to the circle, that means that this right here is a shorter distance and you're covering that over the same amount of time. And so if you're, if you're going around the outside of the circle, that's going to be going a lot faster because you're traveling, you're doing, covering more distance over the same time as this one is going around that one. So that's why the radius does make a big difference on what your linear speed is because that affects how far you away from the circle and affects how big the path is that you're actually taking going around there. So that's the difference between angular speed and linear speed. So now let's take a look at a couple examples. Okay, so now we're going to do a problem that talks about the two formulas we just uh, reviewed, the angular speed and your linear speed. A circular gear rotates at a rate of 75 RPMs. Now 75 RPM is actually a type of angular speed. However, it's in the wrong unit. We want it to be in radians per minute, not revolutions per minute. So we have to uh, change that over. So I have omega. Okay, I originally they gave us 75 revolutions for one minute. So that already is a, a type of angle over your time, but revolutions, we want to make that into radians. So we have to change revolutions into radians. So the way that we do that if we use dimensional analysis here, is we want to kind of have a conversion factor that relates revolutions and radians. The very beginning of the video of this section, when I first introduced angles and different kind of measurements, we talked about that with radians, one revolution is the same thing as two pi radians. For this, what we'll do is we'll put in revolutions on the bottom, so one uh, revolution is the same thing as 2 pi radians. That's your conversion factor we're going to have here. Now revolutions, those are both going to cancel. When you multiply, we get 150 pi radians per minute. That's what, that's what our units would be on that particular one. So radians per minute, that's what they originally wanted, and that's what we have for our answer. Now down here, it says, what's the linear speed? Okay, so linear speed, we want to use this formula. V equals R times omega. The omega is what we just found in part A, 150 pi radians per minute. We're going to put that into this formula along with the 3. Now the 3, if you're 3 millimeters from the center, that would be a radius. That's how far, how far you are from the center of the circle. That is a definition for radius. So we know 3 is going to go in there. 
So here's what it looked like. We have three millimeters. We're multiplying that by 150 pi, and that's going to be radians per minute. So when we multiply this together, we get 450 pi, but now let's talk about our units. I mentioned before in the arc length video that your radian is considered a dimensionless unit, so therefore in this case, your final answer would just be millimeters per minute uh, would be your final answer. That would be the amount of millimeters that you're covering over a certain amount of time, that would be your linear speed. Okay, here's the next problem. A wheel rotates at a rate of 2160 degrees per second. And again, we want to find the angular speed in terms of radians per minute. So this time we have to change two things. We have to change the angle into a radian measurement and the seconds we have to change into minutes. So first we start with our omega. Omega is 2160 and this is 2160 degrees for one second. That's what we originally were given. We want to take this and we want to convert it into radians per minute. We're going to do that by using dimensional analysis. So we talked about before in the beginning of this section how we change degrees into radians and we're going to do that in this case. We want the degrees to cancel so we got to put 180 degrees down below and we're going to put pi radians on top. So now we have 2160 degrees over one second pi radians. The degrees are going to cancel and now that would convert it over into radians per second. But I also want to change the unit of time, change it over into minutes. So we need to write our conversion factor for minutes. So seconds is on the bottom down here. I want the seconds to cancel, so I'm put seconds up there, and I'll have my minutes will be down below. One minute is the same thing as 60 seconds. So for this, if you multiply across the top, across the bottom, the 60, you can cancel that. 60 in here, that would make that a 3. 2160 divided by 3 is going to be 720. So you get 720 pi, and this would be radians per minute when all that reduces. Okay, so 720 pi radians per minute would be the angular speed. Now we want linear speed of a point on the wheel. That's 30 centimeters from the center. The 30 centimeters, that's going to be our radius. The formula we're going to use is this. V equals R times omega. Your V is, is going to be your radius times your angular speed, which we found in part A. So it's going to be 30 centimeters, and you're multiplying that by 720 pi, and that would be radians, and that technically would be over one minute. We can look at it that way. And then when we multiply that together, we get 21,600 pi when we multiply those. Radians is dimensionless units, so our units are going to be centimeters per minute. So centimeters per minute would be your uh, final answer on that one. It has the same unit, centimeters, matches your uh, radius, and it has the same unit of time that we had for part A. So again, 21,600 pi centimeters per minute would be your linear speed.